Today on the channel, we're going to check out a plug and play FPV wing and FPV plane flight controller. What's up guys? Today you're going to learn something about an FPV plane wing or sailplane. If you want to add flight controller to an FPV plane or wing or even a twin or a VTOL plane, you can now do that with SpeedyB's brand new F405 flight controller. So it runs off the app and it's native to RG Pilot as well as iNav. If you wanna try out iNav for the first time, iNav now works inside the SpeedyB app, so that's super cool. So let me go ahead and walk you through the F405 wing app version of this brand new flight controller for FPV planes. It is super cool. I'm excited to uh, let you check it out and maybe you'll learn something today about FPV planes. Guys, this is the box that you get and inside you get this quick start guide which is actually pretty detailed it has links to the app the installation guide and their facebook page they have a pretty active facebook group this comes in three different layers and they all stack up and they actually have power connector pins inside here i'm going to show you in a minute it also has a usb-c connector on there for connecting to inav or rg pilot and it kind of walks you through a hardware description here the different boards how you can have dual esc support that i mentioned earlier as well as xt30 here or xt60 or even an xt90 uh, for much larger wings and they have the analog vtx inputs as well as the hd inputs which is pretty cool so a lot of this is plug and play even for Cadex Vista or DJI 03s or even the older air units uh, as well and uh, S-Bus support we have crossfire support which is pretty cool analog cameras and digital which is cool and also app connection so you can download the speedy app they do have a qr code to download that but this is double-sided and it's pretty detailed here but i'm going to walk you through this and save you a lot of reading if you're interested to grab one of these uh, we're going to put the link down below and if you like these guides be sure to become my patreon that would be a big support now let's take a little closer look at the boards themselves now we're starting out with the bottom of this board and it does have a 30 by 30 mount set up here and it also shows that we can power it from 7 to 28 volts which is pretty cool um, it has a current sensor built in up to 215 amp max which is pretty amazing it has a built-in bec uh, 5.2 volt or 2.5 amp for fc and peripherals which is cool it also has an, another bec in there 9 volt to 2 amp for vtx camera gimbal etc if you want to add some type of head tracking on this you can also do that inside your dji goggles or analog goggles and another BEC with 5 volt 5 amp for your servos output as well uh, all the way it looks like 7.2 volt and 4.5 amp but it defaults to 5 amp which is standard so now you're looking at the front of the bottom board of the f405 wing and you can see it is labeled speedy b here it says simplifying fpv absolutely is up top left right here we have VTX and camera BEC, the flight controller BEC, and the servo BEC down here which defaults to 5 volt, as well as our pin layout here for plugging up and powering the next stack, part of this stack and the next board up. Uh, you do get some rubber grommets and standoffs in the pack. I'm going to show you the extra wiring as well that comes with it. Down at the very bottom you also have up to 28 volt. 8s support for battery input uh, so from anywhere from 2s all the way up to 8s and dual esc support here which is super cool for twin motor planes now this is the top of the f405 wing flight controller and you can see the arrow here signifies which way is the front of this board if you're wanting to be impressed get ready because not only can you run two esc on the power distribution board below this, but the flight controller itself will run up to 11 servos on here. The pins at the bottom here go all the way from S bus to S1 to all the way up to S11 here, and it supports up to five volt on each pin layout here. And if you're flying ELRS or Crossfire, those solder up right here with T1, R1, and a five volt and ground here. And if you're wondering, this FC has six UARTs for camera, VTX, GPS. You can also plug in airspeed sensors, uh, pitot tubes, or pitot tubes, or however the hell you want to say that, as well as HD connection here for HD FPV. It also supports black box data recording with this SD card support here, but we don't have an SD card in the box. You'll have to provide your own. 
across the top rail is where your analog VTX is going to solder onto on the top right right here. Just below that we have where the analog camera solders onto. You can see cam right there clearly labeled which is great. And we see SDA, ground, R3, T3, and SCL here. That is where your GPS is going to solder to. And over to the right right here that is where you can solder up Cadex Vista for T5 on the UART5 mode. And also in the box, once you solder down your pins to where these four terminals are right here, you can plug in your Crossfire or your ELRS with the included cable, which is pretty handy. So you can swap out receivers if you have one go bad. SpeedyB also has four LED strip support for this flight controller, so you can really light up your FPV plane or wing. If you short press the button, it'll switch different effects. And if you press the boot button for three seconds, it'll switch to the flight controller control for your LEDs. And over on this side, this harness is for the telemetry module connector. And we also have an analog airspeed sensor right here, which you can plug in your pit top tube as well, up to 6.6 .6 volt. And you also have a digital airspeed sensor connector right here, just above that one, which is kind of a nice option. And I flipped the flight controller over, and now you can see some more harness connectors down on the bottom side, uh, as well as another airspeed sensor solder pads over here on the left-hand side. You can still see the wing forward here, which shows you me the front of it. Uh, and you can also see that it supports barometer, uh, MCU, I IMU, and what versions of each one of those, uh, as well as micro SD card, which is cool, and INAV, RG Pilot. It has pretty much all the specs on the bottom down here, OSD, uh, uh, AT7, 456, and PWM support up to, uh, it says times 12 there, and uh, I thought it was 11, but maybe it is 12. That's pretty cool. So we also have UART6 solder pads here, um, T6 and R6 right down here, and up here at the very top, starting on the far left here, we have an SH 1.04 P connector. It's for your analog camera, as well as the VTX connector right next to it. And we have the GPS module connector, as well as the digital VTX connector right here for DJI. Now what's also neat is they do give you kind of a combo PCB, which also has your USB-C connector on here, as well as a beeper and the boot button. So you have everything kind of all in one place right here, uh, which is kind of neat. And it plugs into this terminal right here that says AIO. You're just gonna look for pins up right here and plug in this harness. Once you do that, you'll have full USB access to Ardu Pilot and iNav if you want to. Um, you can also program this from your laptop or your mobile device. Now in times past, you had to run a wire from one flight controller to the PDB uh, and to other things here. Um, but it's kind of nice that we have all these harnesses here for plug and play options if you want. If you look very closely here, you can see these tiny pins and that's gonna bring signal and power up from the bottom part of this board. And you're just gonna gently press these two together and plug in all of these pins to that bottom PDB right there. This harness plugs in. And now you have the first two layers connected. And guess what? You also have a third layer which goes on the very top. And you have these pins that line up with this harness here, uh, top and bottom. We're just going to look and make sure that we have the arrows lined up on both. And now when we plug these two in, we can use the app. This also gives us more support than I'm going to show you. One other feature that I really like about this USB connector right here is that it also has a mute switch for the buzzer. If you're working on your bench and you're working in iNav, sometimes the buzzer will start beeping and you can just simply reach over and turn off the buzzer um, or turn on the buzzer. That's just super cool. Um, so right now it's set to the off position and you can make it go all the way over as well to hear the buzzer again and test it out, which is a pretty neat feature. And now we're back to this main top board that plugs into this middle flight controller board uh, with the, the PCB for the PDB down at the very bottom. There's just so much different things going on on this flight controller. It's kind of awesome. It, it pretty much has all of the things you'd ever want for a flight controller. I don't know what they may have missed here. And it seems like they added some things that I've never even seen in like 10 years of soldering these up to FPV planes. Um, and some, some new things on this are the battery indicator. So we have LEDs right here. 
that indicate your battery status by just kind of a visual LED, which is pretty cool. That's that's kind of fancy for me as far as these boards go. Uh, we also have more harnesses for the top board as well. So the top board, you can go even further here. We have um, nine volt right here as well, um, ground TX5 right here and S bus. So if you want to put S bus right there, you can do that. We also have another GPS or any type of uh, sensor spot right there for SDA and SCL, as well as another VTX spot and a ground cam. So um, that's kind of cool. I'm wondering if we can run dual VTXs on here as well as a dual camera option. So sometimes in iNav, you can put camera switch or VTX switch on a switch, which is, yeah, that's pretty awesome. So if one camera or VTX overheats, or goes black on you. I mean, I've been in instances where I could only fly home with my airspeed uh, uh, and my OSD. So um, yeah, that's that's a thing. So if that happens to you, you can flip a switch and go to your secondary setup VTX and camera, which is really, really cool. Now you can also see two other LEDs at the very top right here. And those are your wireless and LED mode indicators. You can see the four setups here for the different four LED ports. And this just lets you know if it's wireless or it's gonna be straight through the flight controller. And again, remember that I told you, you can cycle through those LED modes by pressing the boot button. Uh, short press that and it's gonna show green slow flashing, green solid, blue slow flashing, and that's gonna be Bluetooth. Classic Bluetooth will be blue solid, and orange mode will be the light always on. And that means the four sets of LED strips are in SB LED mode. Um, and that's controlled by the wireless chip. So short press of the boot mode cycles through the different display effects as well. Um, and then you'll see that uh, you'll see different types of effects coming through your LEDs, which is just so neat. So that's a lot of the options for the F405 wing app flight controller from SpeedyB. But, you know, if this is your first go round and you're looking at all of this for the first time and you've never done an FPV wing, you know, this is supposed to be an easy installation, wireless configuration, and it says on their site, free soaring. Um, it's going to take some reading. It's going to take some time. You're going to have to really kind of go through this quick start guide, and I'll put the link down to this flight controller manual as well, um, because, you know, look at it from this perspective. If you're trying to get into FPV wings or planes, there are easier ways to go. If you want to put a comment down below and ask me which one would be the easiest for you as a beginner, please do ask the community uh, and we will definitely try to he help you here in the Drone Camps community. If you are wanting to just go ahead and dive right into this and you have a lot of technical know-how, you've already built quads and things like that, this would give you all the options that you would ever need. Um, and you can run a pretty large battery on here up to 6S. Um, so uh, it is not an 8S configuration flight controller, but you can run 6S, two motors, two ESCs, and up to like 11 to 12 different uh, servos and f different types of sensors on here. So uh, people who fly FPV wings and planes and sailplanes, they go pretty crazy. And I've seen some extreme distance using RG Pilot and iNav. So this for the wing and FPV plane guys, that particular community is gonna be really excited about this flight controller. Uh, it also does, again, include all the cables. It does have some plug and play options, but again, you're gonna to need to solder up your pins to the flight controller. And that's not the hardest thing to do in the world. Um, you're just gonna do them kind of one at a time. And it's not the hardest thing in the world. Once you've done it once, you just push these pins through just like this. And you're gonna take your soldering iron and go one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, um, all the way across there and see if I can get this in focus. But um, you're just gonna add a dab of solder on each pin all the way across. And you know, this is part of flying FPV wings or FPV planes. Uh, pins are just a reality when you're using servos and things. So don't get too intimidated. Um, do some practice pins. Maybe start out with some of the smaller ones. And these are the color coded ones which is ground, the signal ones, and the five volt, um, usually red. And once you've done it a few times, you kind of get into it and you get used to it and it becomes a whole lot of fun. Um, so uh, don't run away from the fun and take your time with it. And I, and I think you'll find something that you really enjoy with FPV planes. And uh, with VTOLs, 
I have to say that my favorite thing about VTOLs is the fact that when I do take off, I, I don't have to throw the plane or take off landing gear or wheels. Um, you just take off and you don't have to guess whether your setup is right or not. Um, so good luck out there. If you want more support on FPV wings or FPV planes, please do subscribe on the channel because I have more cool stuff like this to show you for FPV planes, VTOLs, and wings right here on the channel. Uh, long time, huge fan of long range FPV planes. Take care of you guys. Please become a Patreon if you'd like and you appreciate the information that we give here on the channel and all my efforts. I would appreciate it. Take care, guys, and I will see you on the next one.